Ooh, all right, what is going on today for you motherfuckers? I should clearly not be doing this. I am out of my damn mind. I don't know what the fuck is going on, but I am just having a bad experience trying to do this. So initially, when I first started this up, this is Hex Cells, by the way, which is a very lovely, uh, enjoyable, like, puzzle logic game. Very fun. Check it out if you're interested in that kind of thing. You basically, let me, I'll just show you the very first level here. I obviously have not progressed to a significant amount here, but basically what you do, as you see, you just, you either cl left click to do things like this, uh, where you believe there's a blue spot underneath, or you right click to blow them up if you believe there is not a blue space underneath, and then these numbers inside show you how many of the connecting cells, uh, to this one thing are blue. So obviously this one has six, there's only six surrounding and all of them are going to be blue. This is showing me zero, so there are going to be nothing, there's nothing connecting them. And so now, there's one, that's how, that's how it works, that's how the game works. It gets more complicated as you go on, I'll just kind of show you. It does progressively, well not here. Um, I think each time, basically each time you go to a whatever one, it introduces a new element. Maybe not. Come on, dog. Show me something new. Aha! Here we go. So, like, now you get to this one, and it tells you how many of the cells in each row there are that are blue. Uh, later on, it'll tell you, like, if it's in brackets, that means all of the, uh, whatever it's pointing out, whatever one that's connecting, if, that, if it's inside the curly brackets, those are all, that means they're all connected to each other. There's no spaces in, there's no empty spaces in between. Or if they are surrounded by hyphens i believe it means that they're not like they're not connected but that doesn't mean they're all not connected it just means like if it for instance if it's a three surrounded by hyphens you can have two that are connected and then one that is not and that'll still count that kind of thing so it introduces a lot of different elements to it and it gets more complicated the more you go in so let me just go to five five here and i hope that'll be a properly that is not a properly big one. That one introduces another new mechanic. Show me something big. There we go. Something like this. It, it's, it gets more complicated the more you go along. It's very fun. It's very enjoyable. I actually just... This is something that I use for like... If I'm starting to lose focus on a project, I'll come in here and I'll just play like a level of this. So it's very it's very enjoyable for that. It's a very fun game. And I highly, I highly recommend it if you're interested in that kind of, you know, the logic puzzles. So anyway, let's actually get on topic here. I was requested to speak on how I got into fighting games by Pokemon Blaze, and I am not, there's no like particularly special moments. Like I didn't see the Daigo Perry and be like, holy shit, I gotta play fighting games. Or Justin Wong's Marvel 2 comeback, you know, that kind of shit. I didn't, there wasn't any one moment that I could point to and be like, this is what got me into fighting games. But I can point to like, what caused me to get to the various levels of uh, interactivity, investment, involvement, involvement is probably the best word, levels of involvement that I have gotten in fighting games. And so obviously, before I got heavily involved into them, like actually learning combos, learning matchups, that kind of thing, I had experience with fighting games, but nothing in depth. So like, when I was a kid, obviously there would be arcade, you know, you'd go to a pizza place and they'd have arcade machines there. Almost every single pizza place I ever went to had Street Fighter 2 or uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time. And so I would regularly play Street Fighter 2 there, but I never did anything special. I didn't really understand anything. I just went, you know, we would play each other, uh, myself and, you know, other kids, wherever, whoever, friends, uh, just random people, whatever. We'd play each other, but we never had any fucking clue what we were doing. We just hit buttons. Um, and then later on, and then I kind of skipped, like, all the classic fighting games. CBS 2, Marvel 2, Soul Calibur, Street Fighter Alpha, Street Fighter Third Strike, all that kind of shit, because that was all on consoles, and I never had a console until, well, I had a Sega Genesis as a child, and then I skipped every console in between all of those until I got an original Xbox. So obviously I missed all the fighting games that were in between that shit. I basically only played handheld stuff, which was mostly RPGs. So it wasn't until I got that Xbox that I started to play other fighting games. Marvel 2 was one of them. Uh, 
Soul Calibur 2? It was Soul Calibur 2. Um, Dead or Alive 3. I played a little bit of that. I never really got, again, I never got significantly involved in it. I didn't play other people. I didn't have high-speed internet for Xbox Live or anything back then. And so, it was not until Street Fighter 4 came out that I finally really started to kind of act halfway competitive in a fighting game. And it's thanks to Street Fighter 4 that I am where I am now. Like, that is undoubtedly the game that ensured that I continued to maintain interest in fighting games in particular. And so, um, I was never particularly good at Street Fighter 4, as you can imagine, because that was the first fighting game where I actually tried to, like, work on execution and stuff. And just to show you how bad my execution was, the first character I originally tried to pick uh, was Sagat. It had nothing to do, obviously, Sagat is widely considered the best character in Vanilla Street Fighter, but I had no knowledge of tier lists back then. I didn't know what they were. I didn't know anything about character strength. I didn't care about anything. It's just this dude used Muay Thai. That's why I wanted to pick him. And so I tried to pick him. I, I could not do DP motions. Could not do DP motions for the life of me. And so I ended up picking Bison. Thoroughly average. Nothing special. It's not difficult to be an average Bison. So that's basically where I was. And then Calamity Trigger came out. That's what got me into fighting games. That's what got me interested in looking into other fighting games. So it's thanks to Street Fighter 4 that I ended up finding out about the Blaze Blue series. And I played Calamity Trigger, except it was the same situation there. I wanted to play Hakuman, but I couldn't executionally handle him. And so I picked Bang instead. Even Bang, I couldn't really executionally handle, but I could blow up people. I could blow up other bad players thanks to his guard point stuff. And that was basically the only reason why I won matches. <laughs> <laughs> was because I would just guard point everything on reaction. That was like all I did. I didn't have any combos with him. I just guard pointed everything. And so, um, I didn't get too in involved in that one either. I got to like the mid 20 levels, which back then you wanted to be at like within the 60s meant you played a decent amount. I was only in the mid 20s, so I didn't really play get too involved in that game. Then Super Street Fighter 4 came out, and again, I just kind of progressively improved a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and then Continuum Shift came out, and I finally started, I found out about Dust Loop, I started posting there, I started, you know, talking to people there, and then I found out that there was a scene somewhat near, it's three hour drive away, but it's somewhat nearby, and so I drove out to my first tournament for Continuum Shift, and that was what ended up getting me truly involved in fighting games like i did not know what frame data was i didn't know any of the technology any of the terminology i didn't know any of it until i started going to tournaments and i heard people talking about it and then i was like yo people actually take this quite seriously i didn't know that there was this massive information like, even though i posted on dust loop i didn't really pay attention to any of it and i didn't really get involved in any of it so i didn't really know about any of it but then I was around, surrounded by people that were constantly talking about all of the various information available. And I was like, maybe I should go learn some of this stuff so I don't just come off as an ignorant jackass. That'd be nice. And so it's thanks to that that I ended up continuing to go to tournaments, continuing to go, even though I kind of had a shitty experience. Not really a shitty experience, but just kind of like, it definitely was not optimal. Like, I met some great people there. And undoubtedly, there's absolutely no question that I have met a very strong core group of people that regard I haven't seen most of them in a very long time I haven't talked to any of them in a very long time but regardless of all of that I will consider these people like my friends for life I could see them tomorrow or I could see them 10 years from now and I will react the same exact way because I just I consider them I enjoy their company we have similar interests and so these people are basically, I consider them friends for life. And I have, I have fighting games to thank for that. So obviously you have that dynamic going in, which is obviously going to give you warm and fuzzy feelings about the community in general to begin with. But then you also have the competitive aspect of it, which was enjoyable. However, I only had the former involvement there. I met people like Chriselle, Dacid Bro, um... Orion X Elite, people like that. I met people like that and I talked to them a little bit, but I didn't really get truly involved with them until a little bit later. Um, 
but I still I still had that initial experience, which led me to like, okay, these are pretty cool people. I would enjoy seeing them again, and I would enjoy playing this game against them. Whereas, obviously, if you walk in and you have a shitty experience with all the people and with the game, you're not going to come back. It's, why would you? Um, but my experience with the game actually sucked because of my controller. All because of my damn controller. And I know, obviously, there are tons of people that will blame their controller for their problems. I think we have witnessed enough of me to know that I am very well aware of the fact that my execution is not great. Not the best. Not top notch. Definitely at a mid-level degree of execution, for sure. So I am not going to blame my controller for things unless it's actually my controller's fault. And here's why. Back then, I did not play on stick. I owned a stick, and I'll actually, that's a kind of enjoyable story, so I'll talk about that after this. I did own a stick, and I meant to start playing it, but it was the same exact thing. I got this back when, it, when, it, when I was playing Street Fighter, and I did not have the level of dedication in fighting games that I ended up developing basically during Continuum Shift or the Marvel uh, experience. And so I got it, I tried it, and I was like, you know what, man? I don't care enough about this to learn this. I'm going to go back to pad. And so I ended up looking for higher quality pads meant for... Um, meant for fighting games and mad cats made these street fighter 4 p specific pads that had various characters on them i think back i want to say their initial releases had i know there was a ken i know there was a ryu and i know there was a blanca i want to say there was a zangief and a chun li too but those two i'm not positive about anyway i ended up buying one of those little fight pads and it had it didn't have any uh sticks it only had one big d-pad and then there was a toggle you could use to make it like interact as if it's the left stick or the right stick or the d-pad and then it had six face buttons and two shoulder buttons so almost similar to a stick except you have it's a pad basically and so i used that except as we may know i was solely an xbox 360 player at that point in time every tournament that plays anime games plays them on the ps3 so when it came time to go out to that tournament, I needed a new controller. So I rolled over to GameStop, I looked to see if they had it. Turns out they did. They had a PS3, uh, a new one. It was a T-Hawk controller. I didn't care who was on it, I just needed the pad. So I bought it, I left, I didn't really look at it. I just saw like, oh hey, this is basically the same thing as I already have. It's just a newer model. I'll take it. So I drove on out. I ended up getting there. Uh, could not find the damn place. Because it was in Berkeley, and for those of you that may not know much about Berkeley, California, there's not many places to park in Berkeley, and where there are places to park, it's all metered. So you don't really want to park anywhere around Berkeley if you're going to be parked for a decent amount of time. So I ended up parking at a BART station, which is basically a train station, uh, a little bit further away, took the BART to as, as close as I could get to the venue, and then tried to find the venue. Except the venue was kind of off a little bit of a side street. It wasn't on the main street I was walking along. But the address was still associated with that main street. So I thought it would be, you know, on that main street. But it was like two stores in to like a small side avenue bit thing. So I couldn't find this motherfucker. And ironically, after hearing everything about how bad parking is in Berkeley. And to just don't trust it because they basically make their entire... Uh, city revenue based off of parking tickets don't park there sure enough I ended up running into like a parking officer attendant person and I was like hey have you ever heard of this place called whatever it was I can't remember the name now it's been ages and she was just like nah I ain't never heard of that place before and so I was like, fuck I don't know where I'm going am I even in the right place are there two roads that are named this what is happening and so I started to walk back because I figured I've walked far enough there's no way I'm supposed to be this far past sure enough as i'm walking back i see two tiny little asian people running around with bags bigger than them one of them holding a mad cat's box that's obviously for a stick and i'm like oh i'm gonna follow them motherfuckers and so finally i found my way there and so when i go there there are people already there there are setups people are playing blah 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 so i go and i break open the controller and i find out it's a battery powered controller that is wireless and you plug the wireless receiver into the console and then you, you use the pad wirelessly. You don't want to use a wireless controller for fighting games. It's the same exact reason why you want to have a TV with like the minimum amount of input delay. Because the less you have interfering 
With your timing, the better. Wireless stuff will interfere with your timing. Signals can get crossed, which could cause delay. Just shit may not work for a second. Whatever, it's a potential problem. This product sucked balls. It was terrible. It was not very responsive. It was just not a good look. And everybody knew it, too. Like, the first casual I played against was actually against Dacid, bro. And he had commented on some of my videos before then, so I knew who he was. He knew who I was. Introduced myself. And so I sit down and I plug in the little wireless receiver. And he kind of glances at it like, what the fuck? Then he glances at my controller and he just cracks up. He just starts laughing. I'm like, yeah. Shit, that's a, that's a great... He knows. That's just fantastic. And so thanks to that, I actually... Uh, I went one and two. Actually, actually, technically two and two. Because I got a buy back then. But um, I had a buy. Then I played Zong 1 and got blown up by Zong 1. Then I played against a Hakuman player. And I beat that Hakuman player. And I cannot remember who I lost to. Finally. But I, I... Two and two for your very first tournament is not terrible. Especially when you're working with a controller that doesn't even really function particularly well. <laughs> so anyway. I immediately returned that controller. And uh started learning stick after that because i knew like like i said i'm either going I didn't, I didn't even have a ps3 back then so i either have to have a controller solely for the ps3 or i can just learn to play on stick and just borrow it from somebody else so i started to learn to play on stick and like i said i already had a stick back then thanks to uh street fight so street fight when street fighter first came out mad cats kind of put the feelers out there in regard to whether or not there was any kind of demand for fight sticks and they vastly underestimated how much people wanted those things. And it ended up being one of those situations where there was not enough product to supply the entire demand. And thanks to that, people were making bank off of eBay selling these things. And so I wanted one of my own thinking, hey, I want to take Street Fighter super seriously. I am going to become a professional. Which we all know worked out perfectly well. I have been playing Street Fighter ever since. Very dedicated. Winning tournaments and whatnot and all that bullshit. <laughs> so, I went to my local GameStop because I had heard that GameStop had been selling those. And I went, hey, you know about these? Do you have one? And the, the person that was there, I have always had, I know obviously there are stories about GameStop and the quality or lack of it involved with some stores. But the, my local GameStop has always been a very quality place. I have never had any trouble with them. They've always been very good people. And so this dude knew me. And he was like, you know what? We don't have one on stock. But I'll see what we can do. He ended up f tracking one down that another store that another store somewhere like 20 miles away had it. They got it shipped to them. Let me buy it. So I have this stick that I bought for $150 that's going for $300 plus on eBay. Thinking, hell yeah, this is some slick shit. It came in a wonderful box. It looks amazing. I'm going to start using it. I sucked with it. I didn't have a damn clue what I was doing. I was like, you know what? I'm just going back to pad. I'm going to just forget about this whole stick thing. Let's just, let's just shove this back in the box and go put this in the corner of my room where I will forget about it until like a year and a half later. And that's what I fucking did. Uh, so I'm just, I got to admit, thinking back on it, like there's, so, there's somebody out there wishing they had a stick while I'm just sitting here like, yeah, I don't even want to use this motherfucker. I got it and I don't even want it no more. I probably could have made some bank if I had sold that shit. But it wouldn't have been worth it. Because I would have ended up just buying another stick down the road anyway. Um, but yeah, so that was basically my experience with fighting games. I definitely was not... There wasn't really any... If I had to... Like, if you said, what was the one moment that defined your, exp your overall experience and has made you get to where you are today with them... It is definitely that first initial tournament that I went to. Bar none, it's just that was the old, that was the main reason why I got into other tournaments, and which is why I ended up taking uh, Marvel seriously, and why you know I went to those casual sessions between, uh, mostly between Mystic D, myself, Orion X Elite, Dacid Bro, like we were the most common ones that went there. But there were other, Vanith, Wall Jump, some of you may know him as Wall Jump Man, uh, or Apology Man, would go to those. White Boy Willie, um, Crocell. Uh, Copper Dabbit, I can't believe I forgot about him until the last one. Just, there were a bunch of people that were involved in the whole process. And it's basically thanks to going to tournaments that I ended up being able to go to those casuals in the first place. 
and it's thanks to those casuals that I ever got to a point of decency at fighting games to begin with. Like, I was never, I was a very predictable flowchart level player with Tager until I started going to those and these people that understood how to blow up that flowchart rather than, you know, the average online community, which doesn't in general understand how to beat that shit. It wasn't until, you know, like, they're just sitting there like, yo, dude, you're super predictable. Let me show you how. And they would just blow up everything I did. And I was like, Jesus Christ, they're in my head. But no, they weren't in my head. I was just that predictable. And so it's thanks to that one tournament and enjoying myself as I did and getting to know the people there that led me to continuing to go to tournaments and then eventually getting invited to those casual sessions and then going to those casual sessions on a regular basis, etc., etc., that I am still playing fighting games today. Like, I probably would have given up uh, playing fighting games after Super Street Fighter 4 and Continuum Shift if that had not occurred. Because there would not have been the level of involvement, the level of enjoyment with them that I have now. So, uh, that's that on that topic. Hope y'all enjoyed a little bit of my experiences. And I will come back later with a proper Nate Talks eventually.